masters if you're bronze, gold, or masters. So they'll only care if you're grandmasters. When you're at that point, you can say you're grandmaster and play at a grandmaster level. That's fine. Number two, stop inventing builds. Pros have spent countless hours, if not countless days or weeks, to actually refine their builds and optimize it at such a point it is starting to get ridiculous. I mean, don't the steal those builds. Find a pro build and steal it. Don't be naive and don't think that your build is actually somehow better than the pro builds. They're not. They spend so much time and these pros are actually very, very smart. So go to Liquipedia and steal a build. They're all there. They're, most of them are there. Now, I've, to prove this, I've actually worked with uh, Demon Blood on a build that he had. And it was a fun build. He was infestor rushing, right? And that's awesome. And he had his infestors out at the 8 minute mark. And then I watched this build, and I'm like, well, I think I saw Destiny do something very similar in his uh, ZVP. So let's try and for that, figure that one out. We don't actually have the build in hand. So I start a few games with him, along with another buddy. And we manage to actually do something pretty decent. We get his roaches out at the 7-minute mark, about 30 seconds after Destiny. But still not that bad. But the particular thing he here is that we actually got an extra base and a lot more drones out of his original build. So, yay! That's awesome! See how awesome that is? You get a better result with more bases and more drones. So steal a build. They are a lot better. Number three. Stop saying stuff like, Yo, gee, I got my strat. Or, I've got my build, brah. You're not a gangster. If you are, no one will believe you are. Sorry. So your strategy is actually nothing special, nor invincible. It might work often at your level because you are low level. It will eventually stop working, and you'll have to switch strategies. So might as well just work on general game sense and getting better overall, not just that strategy. That's it. Number four, stop giving tips and stop raging when you're, you are given tips. Now, I don't actually mean this to actually stop giving tips. Tips are always fun. But if you don't know or if you're unsure, don't just spell the tips out there. You're going to get a lot of rage. And if you actually do give a tip and you're, say, bronze or silver... Well, and someone actually calmly explains to you why that tips make, tip makes no sense. Don't rage about it. Stay calm. Ask questions and learn from it. Raging is not good for you. It'll shorten your life. And that was it for my three points. Now, I have also a few... Um, a, a few a few misused terms, if you will, that are thrown around a lot in the StarCraft 2 game, right? So, I will try and justify these terms, what they mean and what they are especially. So, here's number one, the term metagame. Metagame. This one is actually the most common one, and actually the one that's used closest to its true meaning. Now, the only problem with the metagame is that it's often misused with um, build order loss. I explain myself. Here's an example, actually. If you fast expo, you should be able... Uh, sorry. Uh, if, yeah, if you fast expo in ZVZ, you should be able... Uh, your opponent will... If your opponent goes 10 pool, and that's a build order loss, you're going to lose, let's face it. He did not metagame you. So if you fast expo, your opponent goes 10 pool. You will lose and he will not have metagame due. Okay? It's a build order loss. Metagame, simply put, is just the general tendency of the ladder today. So that's the metagame. Oh, people like going DTs nowadays. That's the metagame. Okay? And uh, really, by the way, pros are not rarely get metagamed. Uh, pros actually research their matches in advance and know the tendencies of their opponents. 
So it's not really... They, they prepare for their matches. They know what their opponents are going to do. It's rarely actually a metagame issue. Now we'll just switch games here because this one's over. I won it with Roach Hydras against Terran, by the way. It was Diamond versus Platinum. So that was my point. And... Okay, Med that's it for metagame. Uh, this game, uh, by the way, was actually something quite fun that happened on the ladder. It was the first time that um, someone actually recognized me. Yay! You see that? Racco. He's awesome. He's like, are you the person who casts? Yes. Why, yes I am. Cast this game and Racco, I promised you, here it is. I won't cast it because you told me that you played horribly and I agree this is not your full potential now that, now that we have played, have played more than one game. But um, here it is. Here's my first fan recognition replay. So thank you so much, Racco. This made me very happy. Now we were at the point where I was going to say that, yeah, terms that are misused. Number two, cheese. Oh god, the cheese. The cheese. Yes, the cheese. Okay, I'm a strong believer that this idea of a cheese should not even exist in StarCraft. And if it should exist, it should not have a negative connotation to it as it does right now. It should not be a bad thing. I agree, okay? Six pool is a cheese. There's no denying it, obviously. But who cares? Who cares if it's a cheese or not? I mean, you should be able to hold a six pool. If you can't, just blame yourself, not your opponent. You just suck. Ah, sorry, you do. I know it's hard to admit it, but you should be able to hold off cheeses. Cheeses are an integral part of the game. Learn to deal with it. You really think that sh there should be a no-rush five-minute rule to avoid cheeses? I don't think that would be very fun. That would mean no early game harass. I mean, is it... Are two Reapers a cheese since Reapers have not been used? What about three Reapers, four Reapers? I don't know. And, I mean, cheeses, the problem with cheeses is, is they're often associ associated with a lack of skill. And that's because cheeses can catch your opponent off guard and they can allow you to beat a better opponent if he is negligent. Now, it happens to everyone to be negligent. But you should be able to scout out and identify and hold off a cheese. That's your job as a StarCraft player. And really, what about the opposite of the cheese? I mean, is triple expanding before the fin four minute mark a cheese? Even if you don't attack. Ugh, that's weird. That's actually touchy. Um, so really, about cheeses, don't hate the player, hate the game, if you hate cheeses, stop playing StarCraft. Uh, don't stop playing StarCraft, it's an awesome game. Learn to deal with cheeses, okay? Blame yourself and get better. Again, it all comes down to get better. And this brings me to the third term, and it will be the last, so don't worry. The timing push. The timing push. Timing pushes are actually... Um, this is one of the actually miss more of the more most misused one in the lev low level games anyways. Uh, timing push is a very very precise moment in a game where the normal build of your opponent has a weakness and you exploit that weakness with your own build. This is extremely precise. I can't emphasize how precise the timing push is. Uh, this it, for an example, it's it's just a window of a few seconds where you can exploit something. Okay, for example, a, a pro will know that his opponent will have an expo up at the six minute mark and his first warp in right after this. This is an example. I don't know the actual timings. Meaning, if he gets stim pack at precisely the five minute and fifty second marks, he will have ten seconds where there will be nothing at his base, or he can actually push push through. And that will be a timing push. Uh, this can't apply if your opponent doesn't actually have a very precise time of vulnerability. So this is why timing pushes become rarer and rarer as the game go on. 
games go on, there won't be any timing push past the 10, 15, 20 minute mark because regular timings don't apply anymore. To have a timing push, you need a regular timing. And really, this um, th this can ha the timing push can actually happen in say uh, masters, high diamond, even low diamond leagues before when the regular builds still apply. So before say the eight minute mark or four minute mark for Zerg, let's pl let's face it. And after that, builds kind of disappear, and so does the timing push. The timing push is according to a very precise build. If you're in Platinum, they can apply, but they will be very early on because people tend to screw their builds. Not so much, but enough to delay something of like 10 seconds. And that is the precision that the timing push actually demands. So it might happen before the, fir say, 5 minute mark, but then you'll just say it's a cheese and you won't even say timing push. So anyways, if you made a timing push and it kind of works and you're a low level player, it's probably not a timing push. It's just a strong push and it worked because, well, you're better than your opponent. So that's awesome. Sometimes you suck, sometimes you're better than your opponent. So they're not really timing pushes. They're just strong pushes when you have a lot of stuff. And uh, that will be it for this 10,000 view video. So thanks for watching, by the way. And I will also, and let the, I, I, I want to say this, let the hating and the loving begin. So don't hesitate to post anything in the comments. I will take the hate like a man as well as the love post if you agree, if you disagree, if you enjoy something, and this is quite a big engagement, but I do win this game, don't worry. And Racco, again, thank you, that was awesome. And also I'd like to thank Silent Ghost, by the way, for my new awesome overlay, he did send me this. I would also like to thank Racco, obviously, for this game, Demon Blood for always watching and helping me with coaching. And, uh, of course, Sparky, Sparky, for being very awesome. And if you enjoyed this, don't hesitate to comment and watch my other videos, casts, and my live stream, as I would... It's always fun to have live viewers when I cast videos, so... And I will be, I will keep posting. Tell me if you enjoyed this. I might be tempted to make another one if you actually liked it. I will keep posting what you guys like, so... Don't hesitate to tell me. Post on my channel, on this video, or anything else. I will try and reply. And I will keep casting many, many games. I have casted so many Gamecom games lately that it has been... It, it's been a lot of games. I have uploaded about 160 games in the past two months. That is just insane. Now, well played. Thank you, Racco, and that will be it. So... Thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for the 10,000 views. That is awesome. I love you guys, and I will keep posting as long as some people keep watching and enjoy this. So thanks, everyone, and tune in for the next ones.